morning. This is Economics Grade 12 Revision Program provided by the Ministry of Education of Ethiopia. This is the first unit, which is about the introductory part of economics. And under this unit, we are going to see the fundamental concepts of economics. Under the fundamental concepts of economics, we will see the scope of economics, we will see the definition of economics, we will see the methods of studying economics, and the other important concept that we will see under this topic is the economic system. Under the economic system, we will see the major economic systems called capitalist, command, and the mixed economic system. The other important concept of economics that we will see under this unit is the decision making units and the circular flow of economic activities now let's start with the first fundamental concept of economics which is about the scope and the definition of economics first of all economics is there are two fundamental factors that led for the emergence of the field of economics and these two fundamental causes that led for the emergence of the field of economics are first, human needs and wants are unlimited. We have unlimited material wants. And second, economic resources are limited. The means is to satisfy these needs and wants, or simply, economic resources are scarce in their nature. Scarce in their nature. So, when we say human needs and wants are unlimited, once, for instance, if we were with barefoot, we need a shoe, and when you get a shoe, you need a car, and when you get a car, you may need airplane. So our needs and wants are unlimited. But the means to satisfy these needs and wants, or simply economic resources are limited in their nature. So we cannot fulfill whatever we wanted to fulfill. So economics is emerged as a field of study. So it's the study of how a society allocates these scarce resources for the maximum fulfillment of human needs and wants. In order to fulfill our needs and wants, the field of economics is emerged as a discipline. So it is targeted to use economic resources more efficiently in an efficient manner, in an efficient manner. Economics is both science and art. When we say something science, science is a system and organized, a systematic and organized knowledge that correlates cause and effect. Or simply, if something involves causes and effects, we can consider it as science. So in economics, we saw various factors systematically and we collect them and classified. Then after analysis, we will make interpretation. So economics is considered as science because it also involves the causes and effects. Art is a technique or way of doing something or achieving something. So economics provides solution for major economic problems, macroeconomic problems such as inflation and unemployment. For example, inflation is a sustainable or continuous rise in the general level of price of goods and services. So economics identifies the problems of inflation and provides the solutions for inflation. Again, unemployment constitutes portion of the labor force who are actively seeking a job but living without a job. Unemployment is fundamental or major macroeconomic problems in every country, including Ethiopia. So economics identifies the problems of unemployment and it provides the unemployment rate of a country. So in this case, we can consider economics as an art because it is a means of achieving something. Now let's see the branches of economics. Economics is broadly categorized into the called microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics deals with individual economic units such as individual demand, individual supply, individual saving, consumption, 
individual market prices and the likes all these are the concerns of microeconomics it deals with individual or small economic units Macroeconomics is also called the theory of price and the major or the central problem of microeconomics is determination of price and the tools used to determine price are individual demand and individual supply individual demand and individual supply are the tools used to determine the market price under microeconomics this microeconomics is a theory which was proposed by Adam Smith and Adam Smith is generally considered as the father of economics the father of economics the second division of economics is macroeconomics macroeconomics deals with the economy as a whole it deals with magnitudes such as aggregate demand aggregate supply the general level of prices of goods and services aggregate consumption the level of savings in an economy all these are the major concerns of macroeconomics macroeconomics is also called theory of employment and income and the tools used to determine income and employment in an economy are aggregate demand and aggregate supply so aggregate demand and aggregate supply are the major tools of macro economy next let's see the importance of economics why do we study economics what is the importance of economics first of all economics helps us to understand certain problems and questions affecting individuals and families also the society it helps us to understand the major problems that affect individuals the major problems that affect society and families and it also provides the possible solutions for these problems so the discipline of economics is very important another important function of economics is it helps us to understand how different economic systems function how the capitalist economic system functions how the command economic system functions and how the mixed economic system functions so it provides information about the alternative means or economic systems the study of economics helps us to understand how to solve the crucial problems such as poverty and unemployment it provides information it identifies the problems it provides the solution of such crucial macroeconomic pro problems such as poverty and unemployment another important function of macroeconomics is it helps us to understand how social welfare can be achieved through material means furthermore the field of economics or the discipline of economics helps us to understand how to participate in international trade how one can import goods from abroad how one can export goods for abroad and it provides information the field of economics provides information the way to import and the way to export commodities and it also provides information about the modes of payment in international trade another important function of economics is economics explains problems and questions that affect the society and it suggests suitable solutions as i told you earlier another important function is the field of economics explains the causes of fluctuations in economic activities what are the major causes for the up and down movement or fluctuation of economic activities what are the major causes for the peak or the boom what causes the depression or throw what makes an expansion and what makes a recession this is identified by the field of economics another important function of the field of economics is economics helps us to develop logical thinking and analytical attitudes it provides ourselves with the logical thinking and analytical attitudes now let's see the basic concepts of economics called scarcity choice and opportunity cost scarcity is the imbalance between human needs and wants and 
the available resources or economic resources that are used to meet these needs and wants. Because human needs and wants are unlimited, but the means to satisfy these needs and wants are limited. Scarcity is a universal problem. Scarcity is not a problem of poor countries only. Scarcity is also a problem of rich countries. That means scarcity is universal. There is scarcity in America, there is scarcity in Ethiopia, there is scarcity in Ghana, there is scarcity in Russia, and there is scarcity in London. So it is a universal problem. That means we cannot avoid it. There is scarcity in America. The Americans are rich, but they cannot fulfill all their needs and wants. So there is scarcity in America. Scarcity means not shortage, not shortage, because we can avoid shortage, but we cannot avoid scarcity. Shortage is an excess of market demand for a commodity over market supply of a commodity. For example, if the market demand for weight is 50, for weight is 50 quintal per week in one warada, and if the market supply for weight is 30 quintal in one warada per week, then there is an excess of the market demand for the market supply and it leads to shortage. This is shortage. It creates shortage. So we can avoid the problem of shortage by increasing supply for commodities since it is occurred by an excess of market demand over market supply. By increasing supply of a commodity, we can avoid the problem of shortage, but we cannot avoid the problem of the problem of scarcity. So the major difference between shortage and scarcity is we can avoid shortage, but we cannot avoid scarcity. If resources are limited, we are obliged to make choices among different vendors. Since we cannot fulfill all our needs and wants, we are expected to make choices among the alternative choices. And so from this, we can conclude that this scarcity implies, implies choice, choice. And if you are obliged to make choices, if you are obliged to make choice, you are going to incur some costs. This cost is the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the amount of the next best alternative that is given up or foregone while we are choosing a commodity or while we are producing a commodity. If you prefer something, you are going to lose something. The amount of a commodity that you are going to lose or given up or foregone is called opportunity cost. For example, you do have 50 bar in your pocket and the price of watching cinema is 50 bar and the price of eating your lunch is 50 bar. Now, if you prefer to watch cinema, you are going to lose your lunch and if you prefer to eat your lunch, you are going to lose cinema. So. The opportunity cost of watching cinema is losing your lunch and the opportunity cost of eating your lunch is losing cinema. So from this information, from this information, scarcity implies choice. If there is a scarcity, if there is limited resource, then it leads to choice. And if you are obliged to make choice, you are going to incur cost, what economists call opportunity cost. Now, under the concepts of basic concepts of economics, let's see the law of increasing opportunity cost. The law of increasing opportunity cost states that the amount of the next best alternative that is given up or foregone while you produce a commodity or while you choose a commodity tends to increase. In short, it tells us the opportunity cost of a commodity will always increase. The law of increasing opportunity cost tells us the opportunity cost of a commodity will always, will always increase. This is all about the first revision lesson in unit one. Stay home, 
stay safe thank you